Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now if you're like me and you think about the Game Boy Advance, you think of the awesome 2D games that came out for this pretty cool handheld. But there was a handful of developers that tried pushing the hardware and making 3D games for it. Today we're going to go over some of those, and the question is, are they any good? Let's take a look. Alright, I want to start off with one of the more technically impressive 3D games on the Game Boy Advance, and that is Drome Racers. Now this is part of the LEGO franchise. Now I would describe this game as similar to Mario Kart in that it has power-ups and you're basically trying to battle your way through these levels, but check out this 3D game engine. I mean, again, it's really impressive. Now the frame rate is admittedly fairly low but it's completely playable and I think it's pretty impressive. Next up is a game that is also fairly impressive that is called Star X. And this is a rail shooter similar to Star Fox 64, although not as well received. Now I'd love to tell you that this game has an amazing story, but basically it's about aliens trying to enslave the human race and you are the one tasked to fight them back but I do feel like it's a good attempt to do a true 3D game on the Game Boy Advance. However, there's a lot of pop in with the graphics and also the controls feel a bit too sensitive. So not everybody likes this game, but again, if you can find it cheap, check it out. Many of you like me might remember playing Stuntman when it came out on the PlayStation 2. Pretty fun game. You basically play as a stunt person and you're trying to hit certain marks as the director is calling them out. These games are notoriously difficult to play, but once you play through the level a couple times, you can kind of get the hang of it. So they ported it over to the Game Boy Advance, and yeah, as you can see, the uh, results are kind of mixed here. I mean, I think the car is technically a sprite, but the, but the uh, levels themselves are in 3D. You know, not the most impressive looking game. However, I did find it to be a little bit easier than say the PlayStation 2 version. So overall, you know, I kind of like it. Here's a 3D platforming game that actually looks pretty impressive on the Game Boy Advance. And that is Asterisk and Obelisk. These characters in this game is based on a French comic book. Although, if I remember right, I think I had to import this. I don't know if it came out in North America. Uh, it's a fairly long adventure game, clocking in at around, say, 15 hours. Also, what I really like about this is that the difficulty feels just right. A lot of people consider this to be one of the best examples of 3D graphics done right on the Game Boy Advance. So if you see a copy of it, you should definitely check it out. What? A sports game on my channel? I never talk about sports games. Well, FIFA 07 Soccer by EA Sports is a 3D game on the Game Boy Advance. And, uh, you know, I would say that the results are kind of mixed. At the time, a lot of people were impressed that EA was able to pack in all 510 teams into this cartridge and into this game. So that's pretty cool if you're a soccer fan. However, you know, it, it struggles with this game engine. It's not great. Also, the sound effects are pretty weak. It's definitely not a great soccer game, but again, it's cool that it exists on the Game Boy Advance. Here's a pretty cool game that I didn't know existed on the Game Boy Advance that is called Kill Switch. Now, this is based on a cover-based shooter that came out on the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox. I played that when it originally came out, and that's a surprisingly fun game. And then they ported this to the Game Boy Advance in 3D, and it works really well. Most of the cover-based shooting mechanics are there, although, as you can see, the levels aren't the most exciting. But they're doing what they can with the limited hardware. Also, the graphics, eh, let's admit it, they're not great. But again, this is actually a decent port and a pretty fun Game Boy Advance game. I remember fondly playing James Bond 007 Nightfire when that first came out on the PlayStation 2 and Xbox. 
and then to find that they ported it over to the Game Boy Advance. And as you can see, the results are kind of mixed. All right, let's say uh, the graphics are ugly, but this is a fun first person game, again, on the Game Boy Advance. So even though it's fairly ugly, and the controls are a bit strange. It took me a while to figure out just how to even like reload my weapon, but it's kind of cool. Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed is one of my all time favorite Need for Speed games. I've gone on record saying that many times before because I just love how it delves into the history of Porsche and lets you play all throughout the history. So here is the Game Boy Advance version of that and Again, it's surprisingly competent here on the Game Boy Advance. Now, you know, the, the level design isn't amazing and sometimes the, the backgrounds, well, they're pretty weak, but it's a pretty fun racing game. But here is a game that is frankly terrible. Oh my God, this is so bad. This is Medal of Honor Underground. It's a first person shooter, as you can see, but it's just not good. It runs slow, it's not much fun. The AI is basically brain dead. The levels are terrible. The graphics are crap. You can't even tell what's going on. You can't even really tell what to do in this game, but it exists. Here's a game that surprised me quite a bit because I just assumed it would suck. And that is Tony Hawk Downhill Jam. This is a fully 3D game on the Game Boy Advance, as you can see here. But what's really different about it is that, you know, typically the Tony Hawk games are kind of open world. You can go wherever you want. In this game, it's a corridor or a road and you're constantly going forward and you're tricking all the way down it. You're grinding, you're doing all that stuff, trying to get to the end, almost like a race basically. But what I found was that this game is actually pretty fun. It's pretty competent. I mean, it's not the best Tony Hawk game, but it is decent. However, another game that uses the exact same engine, but not quite as well is SSX3. Right off the bat, you notice it's much slower. I think it's because it's using more textures on polygons than say the Tony Hawk game did. So maybe that's slowing it down. Also the physics, again, just feel like you're on the moon. It doesn't feel right. And there's a bunch more graphic pop in than the other games. So I would definitely give this one a miss. Here's a first person shooter that not a lot of people talk about. It's called Dark Arena. And this is very much like Doom. It's a mix of sprites as well as 3D rendered backgrounds. It's actually a really fun game. Um, plays just like Doom where you're looking for keys to unlock doors, has good controls and, you know, again, pretty decent graphics. Speaking of Doom, let's take a look at Doom 2 running on the Game Boy Advance. It's important to remember that some of these games are doing a mix of actual 3D as well as scaling sprites and things like that. To give the end user the illusion of 3D running on this, you know, fairly basic hardware. Another example of that would probably be Crazy Taxi. Most of this is in 3D, which I think really slows the game down making it almost unplayable. But I think your car is probably a sprite. So you can kind of see how developers and programmers were mixing it up to try to get the most out of this hardware. By the way, in case you can't tell, do not even attempt to play this game on the Game Boy Advance. Oh my gosh, it's horrible. So as you can see, it was pretty difficult to get decent 3D games running on the Game Boy Advance. It just wasn't designed for it. However, if I was to recommend two of these games, it would definitely be Lego Drome Racers and also Asterisk and Obelisk, if you can find it. I'd love to know if you are a collector of the Game Boy Advance and you've played any of these, or even some of them that I didn't cover. Love to know down in the comments below. As always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care. Speaking of the Game Boy Advance, if you like playing that system and collect for it, I've done a series of Game Boy Advance Hidden Gems videos with Reggie, so you'll definitely want to check those out. You'll also want to be subscribed to my channel because I release two new videos every week on Tuesdays and Fridays. Thanks for watching.